I'm Cliff, and this is my garage. Today, we're swapping out the Cayman seats for these new ones from Corbo. Hey, welcome back to the garage. And if this is your first time joining me, thanks for dropping by. First off, please do me a favor and go click on that like button down there to let YouTube know that you're enjoying the content I'm making. It really helps you grow the channel. And if you're not one of my subscribers, there's this big shiny red subscribe button down there in the same place. Give that a click. Not only does that also help me grow the channel, it's completely free. And it also enters you in a drawing for a $1 million cash prize. In a previous episode, I explained how I'm upgrading the crash safety and survivability of my 2012 Porsche Cayman S, mainly to help my wife feel better about my new hobby. My main objective is to have FIA certified six point safety harnesses installed, which necessitated installing new seats as well as a roll cage from GMG Racing which is a product I do not recommend. Check out that episode for the explanation that while I am keeping the roll cage, if given a do-over, I'd go with a different one. The reason for the new seats is that while the stock Cayman seats are quite nice and do a decent job keeping me in place during hard cornering, they don't have the shoulder or anti-submarine slots needed to install the six-point harnesses. After a lot of research on seats, I found these RRX seats from Corbeau. Now, it took a while because almost all, quote, racing bucket seats out there are either too wide to fit in the Cayman or they're not wide enough to fit me. <laughs> to be honest, the stock Cayman seats seem to be designed to fit skinny people, and the back has never felt comfortable to me. The RRX seats are quite comfortable for, for my pudgy self, and they fit the Cayman cabin quite nicely. I also like the fact that I was able to get an inflatable lumbar support. I have a somewhat bad back, and lumbar support is really important to me. I also got the optional seat heaters that I'll hook up some other day. I'm going to try and integrate them with the standard heater switches that are in the Cayman. I've got those because the stock seats do have uh, heated, or they are heated. While the RRX seats seem really great, I do wish they were available in leather to more closely match the Cayman interior. Corbeau does make some seats in leather, just not these. I also wish Corbeau had an option for, um, for seat cooling, which is something my stock seats have, and it's really quite nice living in Florida. So let's start out by removing the stock seats. Keep in mind that your Porsche seats probably come out in a very similar manner, but the details may vary. I'm gonna start off by removing the passenger seat first. I think it's just gonna be easier to see what I'm doing without the steering wheel in the way. And also I'm gonna have to switch over to the GoPro for a lot of this because, uh, well, there's just not enough room to get the main camera into these tight spaces. Hopefully the GoPros don't screw up as the GoPros are prone to do. Start off by taking and flipping the seat back forward and then run the seat all the way back. And that gives us access to the fronts of the sliders. Now we need to remove this little cover piece here. Take a screwdriver and there's a, this tab right here. Slide this in at the front edge and just lift up a little bit. It doesn't have to be much, just really a tiny bit and then grab a hold of the cover and it'll slide and come right off. Repeat with the outside cover. Just get it in just a little bit and it comes right off. Now it does tend to snag on this little, um, oh, what is it called, floor mat holder. Just gotta make sure you get up over it and it'll come right off. The seat rails are held on with these uh, strange looking uh, e-torx bolts. Just get a, this is a, um, this is an E12 uh, E-Torx socket. You can't use a regular hex socket, but uh, a full set of E-Torx bolts is less than 10, or a full set of 
eTorx sockets is less than 10 bucks. It's well worth the investment because these eTorx um, these eTorx bolts are all over the engine and just a variety of places on the car. So spend the 10 bucks. I'll give you a link in the video description below on the ones that I use. Now that the front bolts are out, just flip the seat forward and then run the seat completely forward on the rails to expose the rear bolts. The rear bolts don't have any kind of cover over them, so just remove them. Now comes the fun part. There are several connectors under the seat that we have to remove or disconnect. And so we've got to tip the seat up. So we have to first take and move the seat back a little bit so that it'll clear up here and then tilt the whole thing back and then, you know, like wiggle it forward a bit. It's still going to want to fall forward. So your challenge is that you've got to kind of hold the seat up at the same time as trying to work under here. You know, I think I'm going to go try and find a bungee cord to do this for me. So the bungee cord was a complete failure. It was just too stretchy. Uh, a ratchet strap worked great, though. I hooked it onto the little bar that nobody knows what it's for but, uh, right behind the seats. And then uh, I hooked it onto the, the frame rail down here. And it, it's holding it perfectly. This is so much easier, easier than trying to hold it myself while doing all the other stuff. First thing we're going to take off is this connector right here. And to do that, you take this little red locking tab and you pull it straight back. And then you push on this point right here that releases the actual lock and pull back this way. Comes right off. Now this other plug here, I, I believe this is just for the blower motor. I'm not sure. It technically doesn't have to be to, to be taken off, but it's easier to get at the other plug if we just remove this first. And it unlocks the exact, and comes off the exact same way. All right, next we need to get this yellow connector part. And, and that's one of the hardest things to figure out because the, the factory service manual is not very clear on this or basically doesn't really tell you how to do it. The problem is you have to get this little tab here it's a lock you got to slide it out that way to get the connector apart but there's not room to slide it out far enough so what you need to do is reach under here and get your fingers under the bottom of the connector and pull it forward and then slide it down out of this little um i don't know what you call it, a little, little holder thing that little blue holder thing once you've got it out, you can slide it around like this. Now you can pull the connector out far enough for this to come apart. Push the, uh, the lock back in and then slide it. You can see the way these little teeth here match up with these teeth and just slide it back into place. Now that that's loose, you can take and we're completely disconnected from the car go ahead and let's um put this back in and we're ready to pull this thing out of here now, this is going to be fun because this thing is not light uh, i think the easiest way to do this is to go ahead and let this down so that the seat belt locks back in place and then swing the bottom out first keeping the the back low Definitely easier as a two-person job. Be careful because you don't want to gouge up your interior with those sharp frame bits underneath. Whew. There we go. Here under the driver's seat, life is considerably simpler because there's less crud up underneath here. The um, Over here, we don't have the, the airbag uh, weight sensing system. The, that, that's the sensor that's built into the seat to tell whether someone is sitting in the seat and whether they're a child or an adult, and then it ties into the airbag control system. Well, we don't worry about that on the driver's side, so all we have to get loose is this one single connector, which has plenty of room now. You just slide that black part out, 
and it actually, I don't know if you saw that, but it, it actually pushes the connector out. And then there's also a little, and it was on the other side too, but it, it had already come loose. There was this little clip here that, that just holds the, um, this wire onto the seat frame and it like it's just a little uh clip thing there that goes on there it just it pops right off and now the driver's side seat is ready to go and it was much easier now i just need to get the seat out of here which is a little more challenging than the other side because of the steering wheel well i think that went pretty well next time in part two we're going to modify and configure the corbo seats a little bit and then actually get them installed into the cam so did you enjoy part one then go down there and smash that like button seriously it really helps with growing the channel and giving me the chance to create more content like this and while you're down there take a look at that the uh, the subscribe button is it red if it is, that means you're not subscribed to the channel. How about clicking that sucker and becoming a subscriber? That also really helps with channel growth. Uh, a lot of new stuff will be happening soon with the Cayman, including a, a low restriction air intake, a GT3 throttle body, and a new high flow intake plenum, as well as an engine tune. We'll also be diving deeply into upgrading the suspension, starting with coilovers and camber plates and maybe a couple of other parts. If you want to keep up with all that cool stuff as well as the other projects here in the garage, click on the bell icon. That turns on notifications and that way YouTube will let you know when I post something new from here in Cliff's Garage. I'll see you next time.